Fans of Henry Cavill's fantastical adventure series The Witcher had to wait two long years for season two, only to binge watch it in one day. The eight episode long latest season ended on more than a few serious cliffhangers, leaving fans itching for answers. Even though Netflix has already greenlighted the show for a third season, unfortunately, you'll have to wait quite a bit for it. From the looks of it, we're going to get a prequel of the show before we get a chance to watch season three. Looks like Netflix took a page from Marvel Studios' playbook. They ended season two with a surprise post credit scene of their own teasing a spin-off miniseries. Today, we'll be discussing what's planned for The Witcher after season two. Stay tuned to find out. What do we know about this spin-off miniseries? The upcoming spin-off The Witcher Blood Origin will be set 1,200 years before the main series happened. Six episode miniseries will be focusing on the origin story of the first ever Witcher to walk the world. Fans will also get to see the conjunction of the sphere the event responsible for filling the continent with all the gruesome monsters we see in The Witcher Blood Origin. The newest edition of The Witcher Cinematic Universe will star the famous Michelle Yao from the rom-com Crazy Rich Asians, Mirren Mack from the Netflix original series Sex Education, and Jacob Collins Levy from The White Princess. It's still unknown if we'll be seeing any of the series' regular characters from the present timeline. Won't be too far-fetched for fans to hope for Henry Henry Cavill's Geralt of Rivia to make an appearance in the prequel considering he is kind of immortal. However, it's all uncertain as of yet. According to Declan Debara, Blood Origins showrunner, the miniseries will show us what the world looked like for the elves before the humans betrayed them. Unfortunately, that's all we know so far about the plot and the books are of no help either as it's all very vague. Debara revealed that when the writer's room got together to develop this story for season two of The Witcher, they hit a plot hole they tried to understand what the world was like for the elves right before the conjunction of spheres. It was then she turned to a whiteboard and sketched out a plan focusing on what the elves wanted in the world and what the society in general was like before colonization. It is clear from the teaser trailer that tensions are going to be through the roof. Of course, you can count on plenty of bloodshed. Set to launch later this year, it seems the prequel is going to be as rough as whatever Geralt will have to face in the next season of the flagship series. Speaking of which. The franchise so far hasn't announced the official release date for The Witcher Season 3, but they are reportedly tilting towards a December release. What do we know about The Witcher Season 3? While fans agree Season 3 can't get here fast enough, thankfully showrunner Lauren Schmidt Heisrich has confirmed a couple of elements that we can expect to see in the third season, which will be mostly based on her favorite book of The Witcher Saga, The Time of Content. Apparently both the seasons so far have been setting the playing field for everything huge that's about to happen in season three. Here's everything we know so far. When will The Witcher season three come out? Usually Netflix likes to wait a few months after a season's release before they announce a renewal and give an estimated date of release. Lucky for the fans, the crew for season three got a three month head start and with the premiere of season two came the good news of season three being almost completely written. According to reports, season three should have been completed during the holidays However, there still isn't a set date for when the filming process will start. And if the newest variant of the virus is kept under control somehow, productions will be able to return to pre-pandemic speed, meaning a lesser waiting time for the new season. The Witcher After Show While you anxiously wait for both the spin-off miniseries and season three of The Witcher Cinematic Universe, you can enjoy the new After Show that's filled with deleted scenes. Spoiler breakdowns in addition to giving a teaser glimpse of what's to come in the upcoming seasons. If you haven't followed it already, The Witcher Unlocked is available on the show's YouTube page as well as Netflix's Geeked Facebook page. It streamed earlier on December 20th. There were six segments of the after show, the first two focusing on the series' key players. The segment, Hero's Journey, charts the arcs of Geralt, Ciri, Yennefer, and of course, Jaskier. While Adapted discusses several scenes and stories from Andres Sapkowski's books, which gave us the adventures of Witcher in the first place. Then comes The Witcher Spotlight, in which we saw Kyir Morhen find us joining the fray. We also get to see Geralt's on-screen family, Kim Bodnia's Vesmir, Paul Boulian's Lampert, and Yasin Atur's Cohen, joining his rich, introducing them. Other than that, you'll find two deleted scenes in there, one between Geralt and Triss, and the other with Stregobor and Vilchforts. And if you need a detailed explanation, 
explanation of the wild ending of season two, you'll be happy to see an ending explained breakdown with the showrunner. Geralt and Yennefer will be co-parenting. Season 2 saw quite a few heartwarming moments between Geralt and Ciri, proving that he is the father figure in her life. She very much lacks a maternal love, and that's where, very surprisingly, Yennefer comes in. After kidnapping and then returning Ciri, Yen does her best to redeem herself in Geralt's eyes and goes out of her way to help in the fight. Although it doesn't seem like she has gone as far as forgiving her for putting Ciri's life at risk, the the fact that she nearly killed herself to save Ciri from Volnithmir did keep him from killing her. That also convinced him that Yen could very well be the only one who can help raise Ciri, protect her from her own chaos. While the duo will have to set aside their personal feelings for the well-being of their adopted daughter, it's pretty clear they're not going to be your average happy family. According to Cavill himself, Yen's mistake is a tough one to forgive, but it's something that they'll certainly have to work on in season three. Many believe that Ciri might be the missing element from Geralt's and Yen's relationship. Who knows? She might help them find their way to each other. But don't get your hopes up just yet. A familial life with Ciri and Geralt is a far cry from usual antics. You can't deny she has lived a certain kind of life that stops her from trusting anybody. And while she might have learned to be a bit more considerate, to straight up jump into a new way of being could be asking a little too much from Yen. Elves step in the spotlight. Even though season Season 2 was based on the Witcher book titled Blood of Elves. The show's focus on elves was a departure from the outline of the book. But season 3 will give the elves their due spotlight with the introduction of Skoltial, the army of elves that will be fighting on behalf of Nilfgaard. Hisrich did admit that the elves don't come off as great in the dark storyline, but the writers have tried to make sure that their kind is understood and even humanized. Now they're set to lose their way. We'll see the wild hunt. We saw the wild hunt starting to take shape in season two, riding closer to Ciri, ready to claim the princess as theirs, according to Hitzrich. Wild Hunt's claims for Ciri will lead audiences to believe that there's not much more to Ciri's story than we know. Her bloodline, her lineage, and the things that have been kept hidden from her all will come to light in season three. Perhaps some connections to Lord Doran that we have teased this season as well, Hitzrich revealed. The White Flame takes center stage. Season two ended with a dramatic reveal of the White Flame of Nilfgaard, aka Ciri's long lost, previously presumed dead biological father. Ethmir's true identity couldn't be kept a secret for much longer, even if you look at the books. The writers also wanted to really delve into understanding the Nilfgaardian Empire. I don't think Nilfgaard thinks of themselves as evil. They think they're doing the right thing, stated Hisrich. And in order to understand the Empire truly, there's no way to understand it without digging out Emperor and getting to know him a bit more. The White Flame's intro in the story means that all the important characters will get a chance to respond to his story, which is something that doesn't happen in the books. Now that the showrunners are deviating from the books a bit, that opens the narrative for many possibilities when it comes to Enmir's motives. It'll also give audiences the opportunity to see what he's been up to between leaving Sintra and ruling Nilfgaard. That's all for today, folks. How will you spend the hiatus? Let us know in the comments section. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.